Hi, everyone, and welcome to this THG student webinar. I'm Jamie Ramakati, Head of Content for Student Events at Times Higher Education, and we are delighted to be partnering with Campus France for today's session. Today, you're going to learn all about what it's like to study in France. You'll be hearing from the team at Campus France about higher education in France and all of the opportunities from undergraduate all the way to PhD. And you'll also be hearing from a group of students who will talk about their experience studying in France and tell you a little bit about some of the most exciting and interesting aspects of their time studying there. And finally, you'll hear again from the team at Campus France about how cities and universities in France are going the extra mile to welcome international students and provide support services from top to bottom. You'll hear a lot throughout the session about where you can go to learn more and how you can find resources to help you choose a program and apply to study in France. We hope you enjoy the session. Thanks for joining us. everybody. So uh, I'm Lucille. I'm the head of Campus France UK here at the French Embassy. So um, Campus France UK is actually the office that helps every international students or um, people um, living in the UK that want to go and study in France. So uh, just so you know, it exists. And I'll give you our contact at the end of the slides. Uh, and today I'm going to tell you a bit more about French higher education, what are the perks of going to do your study in France um, and how to contact us. So Campus France UK is the office that helps you to apply to study in France. As I was saying, I will briefly introduce you how the French higher education system works. Then I will give you five reasons why you should study in France and then tell you briefly how you can apply. So the French higher education system um, is really built on a similar basis as the, the British educa um, higher education system. So first you have the equivalent of a bachelor, which is called the licence, and it lasts for three years. Then you have the master's degree with a slight different with the UK, which is that um, the master's degree in France is actually two years, but that is really useful because most of the time you have three semesters st studying and then you have one semester of internship. So proper immersion uh, into the professional world. And most of the time students are actually getting employed after their internship. And finally, if uh, you are like on a research track, you can do the equivalent of a PhD, which is called the doctorat and lasts typically for around three to four years. Okay, let's move on to the five reasons you should study in France. First, well, France is really a world-class education. We now have four French universities in the top 100 of Shanghai universities in the last rankings. We are really, really proud of that. So those are public universities with big research centers uh, that have world-class recognized diploma. 
We also have two very young French universities that are in the top 10 of Times Higher Education rankings for universities under 50 years old. Um, so we're really proud of these two new universities. One of them is the Institut Polytechnique de Paris and is a gathering of very, very good engineering schools. So we have a very, very good engineering training in France. And last but not least, we also have excellent business schools since we have two business schools in the top five of the Financial Times European Business School ranking. So congrats to them. A second reason is that the cost uh, of the programs is actually way cheaper than what you could get elsewhere. So we have um, depending if the European fees or the international fees are applied, uh, very advantageous fees for a bachelor degree, 170 euros or 2,770 euros. And for a master's degree, it's a bit more expensive, but usually uh, European fees are applied for people coming from the UK. It kind of depends. There is not a formal rule at the moment. Uh, France is really much adapting uh, to this new um, double uh, standards of fees, but um, most of the UK students that we have sent to France recently got the EU fees. So for a master's degree, it's 270 euros, and the international fees are 3,770 euros. A third reason uh, we are really proud of our higher education system is the fact that we have such a diversity of programs, of institutions. So, for instance, we have 650 arts and design schools, and that includes architecture, that includes performing arts, that includes cooking, that, is co that includes, de well, design, fashion as well. Uh, I can only... Um, tell you on the top of my head, uh, for instance, I'm thinking about uh, L'Institut de la Mode in Paris. Um, we also have yeah, um, lots of cooking schools. Um, we also have uh, 200 engineering schools. As I was saying, we are very, very proud of uh, these uh, programs in France because they are quite unique. Um, in Europe and our engineering are very, very competitive on, on the world's uh, job markets and, and they're very much wanted abroad as well. So uh, if you are thinking of doing an engineering degree, just uh, you, can, you can get in touch with us. We also have, as we're seeing, 66 public universities that are now doing very well in the rankings. Um, and that also have um, very, very good uh, recognition internationally for their research centers. And finally, we have a high number of business schools, and I've mentioned that some of them are doing extremely well and are also um, worldwide known for, for their education. Oh, and I forgot to mention, we also have our short programs in summer schools. So if you don't feel like jumping straight into a graduating program you can also do like a summer school of a French or a French intensive uh, course in France uh, those are really accessible they can last from I don't know one to three months you can go without a visa um, if you are UK citizens because it's less than three months so those are very very accessible and like very easy way to then maybe come back to France for uh a more complete degree, I would say. Four, it's a very international environment. I think it's something that people might not to know about France, but we have actually opened our higher education system to, well, basically um, the world, and there are now a very high person of international students in France. Uh, for instance, we had 15% of graduating students that were coming uh, from outside of France in our universities, 20% in our business schools. Uh, so that those are actually really, really impressive percent of, of international students. 
and and same um, by um, level at uh, university. So in licence, we had like a big increase of the part of international students. And now we, if you're thinking of starting um, your study in France and you're afraid that, oh, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, going to be in an international environment, it's, it's very hard to start my entire higher education journey in a new country. Well, just know that you won't be alone um, because those numbers have actually exploded lately and we have lots of people. So you won't be surrounded only by French people, but also by lots of international European but also worldwide students and finally fifth reason is many programs are actually in English again maybe a preconception that you have about France is that everything is going to be in French but that is not true we have more than 1600 graduating programs entirely taught in English in France so I just put you there a link towards a catalogue uh, then you can go through and you will like see all those programs and you can then filter by level of studies, by topic of studies, field of interest and so on and so forth. So, um, and obviously, if you want to know more about those programs, please get in touch with us. So maybe now that you know a bit more about France, you're like, oh, OK, I want to go, but what do I do? Well, the easier way to find your path towards France is actually to get in contact with us because there are different procedures um, depending on what is your citizenship, um, will you need a visa at the end, and what uh, level of studies you're applying for. So the best thing is like to send us an email or to call us. There are just two things that I would like to stress before we wrap it up. It's uh, if you're thinking of applying for a French program, remember you will need a French language test and um, those tests can uh, take quite some time to, uh, to, to find and then to sit. So uh, just to give you some information, if you want to sit a French language test, you have to register a month prior to the test and then the results will take a month to arrive as well after the test. So it will take about two months uh, to get the test in itself. So if you're a bit in a hurry, um, that might be a bit complicated. So it's a, it's a thing that you, you should have in mind. And also if you're thinking of applying for a first year at a public university, so uh, licence 1, uh, the deadline is actually the 15th of December. So quick, 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 get in touch with us and we'll give you all the info and it will be very smooth and you won't be late. So that was, that was um, about everything I wanted to tell you. Those are all our contacts, um, our socials. So if you want also to, to attend a personal orientation session to discuss your project in France, just, well, give us a call and we will schedule an appointment for you. We are very, very excited to meet you and we hope that you will find your journey towards France. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this session all about studying in France. I'm Jamie Ramakati, Head of Content for Student Events at Times Higher Education, and I'm delighted to be joined today by um, some folks who can really give you the expert insight into what it's like to study in France, some who are current students and some who are alums of universities in France, and we're going to cover everything from the application process to choosing a university, why they chose France for the next step in their education, and what it was like to arrive on campus and be welcomed at a French institution. We've got a lot to cover today, but I do want to start with introductions all around. I'm going to ask our panelists to um, just briefly introduce themselves. If you could tell us your name, where you're from, and where and what you either studied or are currently studying. Claire, we'll begin with you. Hi, I'm Claire Sivita. I'm originally from Rutland, uh, the UK's smallest county, and I studied for a BA and then a PhD in French studies and had two student mobilities in France. Excellent. Thanks, Claire. And Lucy. Hi, my name is Lucy. Um, I'm from Essex in the UK. I'm currently a student at the Pantheon Sorbonne University. I do my master's in gender studies. Excellent. Thank you. And last but not least. 
Yeah, hi, I am Shweta Moda. I'm originally from India, but I'm studying in the UK for my bachelor's in London School of Economics and Political Science. And I did my year abroad last year to uh, Archese Pari, uh, which is HEC Paris. So yeah, and I studied business management there as well. Excellent, thank you. Um, Lucy, for the first question, I'm gonna come back to you and I wanna just start with, um, how did you choose France as the destination for your studies? Um, so I did my uh, Erasmus year, so I did two internships um, in Paris, and that was when I kind of decided that I wanted to have like kind of a future in France. Um, and I think there were three reasons kind of why I chose to continue my studies in France. Um, so I did my studies in French, in like French and politics, so I knew that I wanted to kind of find a way to keep continue learning the language and develop my language skills. Um, so I thought doing a master's would be a great way to do that, like to do it in France. Also, the structure of the French master's was really appealing. Um, so it's over two years. So you have two years to do your thesis and you also do an internship, which was quite unique, um, like in comparison to what we had in the UK. And then also the price of it. It's a lot cheaper to do it in France than it is in the UK, especially if you do it in French. I think you like pay the same as French people, or at least I did. Um, I paid about 240 euros for this year in comparison to 11,000 pounds for one year in the UK. So that was definitely a big factor. Yeah, a major perk. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm going to actually stick with you for the next question because I want to talk a little bit about the actual process for applying to universities. How did you find the process? Tell us a little bit about that because I know it can be really daunting for students um, when they're actually ready to begin applying to universities. They don't really know where to begin. And often for institutions in France, there's a separate application process for French students and for international students. So just tell us a little bit about that and how you found navigating that process. Yeah, so I found out, um, so there weren't any people kind of at my host, like my home uni in the UK that knew how to go about applying for a master's in France. Um, they could help me with my personal statements, but they couldn't really help me with how I was going to do it. Um, so I had to research myself to kind of figure it out. And then I found out about the Campus France um, application process, I think on like a French government website or something. Uh, there was a section that said like, pretty much in bold what to do if you're an international student so it was pretty clear <laughs> what my steps would be um yeah so it was kind of a lot soon so I think I had to do it in December or November was when I had to do the application process which was very different to European students um who I think they can do it in like April or something like that so it's much later um so it was um, it was a lot earlier but it was actually quite a swift process you just did personal statements for each of the universities um and I didn't have to do a separate application for the Sorbonne but I saw that some other unis that I applied to did want me to do it so I know that does exist but at least not for my uni but it was pretty swift you bring up such an excellent point though, Lucy, about um, the importance of just kind of being proactive and looking for resources and tools that can help you throughout this process. And of course, those resources absolutely exist. Um, and we'll be talking a little bit more about them later, but I think it's such a good point that if you just do a little bit of searching, you'll find that the, there are very clear instructions for the process and, and lots of tools out there to help you. Um, Claire, if I can come to you now, you have actually studied in France twice. Um, so can you tell us what about studying at a French institution was so appealing to you and, and what do you feel like are some of the advantages of the French higher education system? Yeah, so I studied in France twice, once as part of my undergrad, um, a, bit by like, a bit like Lucy by the sounds of things, um, going abroad to France for one year and I studied in Bordeaux and then I studied in um, Paris-Nanterre for a semester during my PhD. Um, and that was an, an amazing, I mean, both of them were amazing opportunities. Um, so I had considered going back to Bordeaux after I'd been there for a year to study for my master's, but then I got PhD funding in the UK, um, but I knew that kind of like I needed to go back to France and to kind of explore the sources that were there, I was doing a PhD on French theatre, um, and being there was an incredible opportunity to, I mean, have access to the material I required, attending seminars, making the intellectual connections, um, I still kind of work with some of the colleagues that I met there and then, all the institutions that I attended, um, and I actually went back to work in France after my PhD um, and then came back to the UK. 
So lots of great opportunities for not only building your network and meeting other people, but also career, leading to career opportunities as well. Definitely. And I think it can be quite daunting. Like the word networking, I think, has kind of quite negative connotation sometimes. And you're like, I've got to do networking. But it wasn't really like that. People welcomed me and they've seen that I'd made the effort, especially at the postgraduate level, to make it over to France. Um, And it was just an amazing opportunity to meet people, to talk through ideas as well, to have kind of like that expertise and being like, do you know that X is working on this or they're doing a project on Y? Um, And that was an incredible opportunity. And yeah, it did change the course of my life. I didn't plan to go into French um, studies as an an academic um, originally. And yeah, so it's been life-changing. Amazing. Um, Shweta, I want to move over to you now, and I want I want to, to have you tell us a little bit about your experience over the last couple of months, because I understand that you have just started your studies in France. So tell us a little bit about how you got to where we are today. Tell us a little bit about the process for choosing your program and the application process. Actually, I just finished my studies in France, so I'm back in the UK now. Um, uh, But what's peculiar about my university is that we, uh, LSE has partnered up with six universities that are top business schools across the world. And so it's not technically a part of Erasmus program. So it's it's a direct partnership with HEC Paris. And um, my um, application process was actually six stages. So I had to first write uh, personal statements, then give a panel interview at LSE, then give a panel t- interview at HEC, and then get like uh, a particular number of grades to get, get into that university. Um, but even though uh, very when I first got to France, first of all, my university says that it's in Paris, but it's actually in Juillot of us, which is like a smaller village between Versailles and Paris. Uh, but I think since um, I was there for a year, I had the time to absorb all the shocks and then uh, appreciate the culture well. And I, um, I agree with both Claire and Lucy in this that um, it's just like there are uh, there is such a big window of opportunities back in France um, involving with a different culture and just like um, uh, seeing the world from a different lens and learning uh, so many things in a different uh, culture is very, very, very underrated. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that I went through all the process. <laughs> I think it's really reassuring for students to hear from you all um, how how valuable the experience has been and and to just kind of hear from you guys saying like it's all worthwhile because there are of course points in the process for students who choose to study abroad anywhere where they might think gosh is this really worth it the application process all of the paperwork particularly I think the visa process there's a lot of sort of stress and nuance around the visa process um I see several of you nodding Claire yeah absolutely yeah, I just wanted to come in on kind of the organization side of things because um, I remember CAP and it was amazing compared to kind of the state aid that um, you would have access to on a similar level in, in the UK. Um, and, and yeah, there is paperwork involved. And one of the things I started do- doing during my time in Bordeaux when I was there as part of my undergrad was arriving to basically every appointment half an hour early with a book. And I'd rather be at the front of the queue or like close to the front of the queue and have a bit of reading to do rather than kind of arrive on time and then be further back. Um, so just kind of occupy yourself, but yeah, be organized and, and plan everything in advance. It's really good advice. Yeah, it's a great reminder for students, for sure. Um, I want to move on and talk a little bit more about the student experience. In particular, I want to talk about the experience outside of the classroom, because of course, students who decide to study abroad and particularly study in France, um, the course that they choose, the university that they choose are all very important and, and what they'll be studying will be very important. But a huge part of the experience is is what you have access to outside of the classroom and that experience that you have culturally and um you know, kind of outside of the time that you spend studying. So um, Lucy, I actually want to start with you. I know it hasn't been very long, but I want to know about kind of what has been the most surprising thing so far about your experience studying in France. Um, do you mean like kind of outside of the classroom or? Yeah, classroom? yeah, outside of the classroom. A little um, bit more about student life and student experience than about the study experience. I think, um, what was a change coming from the UK was there's a lot kind of less of a presence of a campus life in France so you don't really have the same level of like societies um as you do like in the UK uh but that doesn't mean you're not going to make friends (laughs) you will make friends um one of the best things I would say that like 
the French uh, student culture system has in place is like everyone has a course group chat like if you follow a certain course like a master's course you will have a group chat in which there is like everyone who's on your course and then from that they organize like people will send in things and say hey I'm going to this exhibition like let's meet outside at 11 and let's go there like it's very proactive in that sense so if you're coming from the UK at least don't be surprised when you don't see kind of all these different societies on campus and things like that because the social life still does exist. Um, maybe you have to find things to do and present to people and be a little more proactive than in the UK, but um, it's definitely worth it. Um, and I mean, I'm coming from the perspective of Paris where I think it's difficult to find yourself with nothing to do. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's really good. It's really nice. Excellent. Um, Claire, for you, what have been along the way some of the most memorable or unique experiences that you had kind of outside of your study program in France? So I think during my undergrad, it was just the general understanding of French culture. Um, so I think my undergraduate studies can be summarized as I worked very hard, but I also partied quite hard. Um, and I made lots of friends kind of in like through nightlife and stuff, and I'm still in contact with some of them. Um, but just kind of like generally being able to have kind of like debates about French history, about French literature um, with people that I just met, the kind of the general knowledge was, was really, really high. Um, when I was in Paris as an Entente Cordial scholar, um, and that was a fantastic opportunity um, to attend events at the embassy, for example. Um, and that for me was a real introduction to what can kind of like soft diplomatic power do, why it's really important to build links in between countries and just to see that at a slightly higher level. Um, and this was a good few years ago now, but I still take those lessons and what I heard during that time with me um, in terms of what I do today. Fantastic. Yes, Lucy. I just wanted to jump in on kind of like the French culture and the general knowledge and stuff like that. Um, Cause that was something I didn't mention earlier about like the French course. Um, this isn't necessarily to do with like the social life, but more like- No, absolutely. It's super helpful. Um, but it's so much more flexible than in the UK. Um, you can really take kind of whatever you want to take. So for example, like my gender studies, my official, like so my gender studies master, my official major is political sciences, but I take courses um, in like um, like the Anglophone world. So I take courses in like early modern literature, um, courses in anthropology, courses in history, courses in economics. Like I think that links into kind of how, like I was so surprised when I got here and all these people knew so much about everything, even though they studied philosophy, they were really kind of like fluent in loads of areas. And then I realized it's because of that really big scope that they have with their course. So yeah, that's something interesting, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's it's a really interesting distinction to make. And I think it's important for students to know if they are kind of, we've, we've, we've kind of bounced back and forth across the different parts of the process of studying in France. But if we think back to kind of choosing a university, choosing a course, why choose to study in France in the first place, um, that's an incredibly important point to make because it's it's a place where, particularly at the master's level, they're going to get a little bit more flexibility than they might at a UK university, and they're going to get sort of a, an opportunity to explore a, a wider breadth of subjects um, than they might in another study destination. So thanks for bringing that up. I think it's it's incredibly important. Um, Sweta, I want to come back to you and talk a little bit about your experience outside of the classroom as well, because I think for students in our audience, you know, of course, the application process is important, but there's lots of resources out there for them to learn more about that. And in fact, another segment of today's session will talk a little bit more about kind of the nuts and bolts of the application process and where to find some of those tools and resources. Um, but you guys are really the experts in what the student experience is like. And I think it's so valuable for students in our audience to hear from people who have done it before. Um, so Shweta, do you wanna tell us a little bit about what your experience was like outside of the classroom? What were some of the highlights of your time in France? 
yeah, of course. Uh, so I think in my opinion, um, whilst you're in exchange, especially in Europe, uh, traveling forms a very core aspect of your uh, entire year abroad. Um, and uh, when I was in high school, we used to have modern United Nations with uh, whose motto was basically um, world without boundaries. And EU is like the perfect example of world without boundaries. And uh, especially in Ron Nicole, I think um, the culture is uh, to network, as um, Claire was mentioning, it's more about um, developing relationships with people and um, uh, polishing your extracurricular skills, because now they have uh, cleared the prepa and they have gotten their uh, good university um, uh, degree and stuff like that. So um, I think um, French people have a very uh, particular work and uh, life balance. So they, they would never ever reply to emails on weekends or they'll, um, they are very particular about um, nine to five and everything. And then they have a good commitment towards uh, balancing their life as well and personal commitments as well. So I think it's um, very easy to connect with a French person if you know that uh, you cannot talk out, uh, about work outside of work hours <laughs> because if you talk about school outside of work hours, uh, outside, outside of school hours, they'll be like, okay, not my type. <laughs> but yeah, I think that, uh, that was one thing that I was uh, really lacking in my first initial months because in the UK, it's, it's just natural to talk about common aspects. But in France, it's more um, talking about um, very um, broad things like literature or like philosophy, politics or something like that. And uh, yes, French people are very uh, fluent in different walks of life. It's great advice to students. And again, I think hearing a little bit about your experience will reassure students who are preparing to study in France that, um, you know, they will make connections with their classmates, both their international student classmates and their local French classmates, and um, that those bonds will absolutely form and that there are just kind of different ways of um, socializing and, and understanding the culture in France. Claire, yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to come in on that because I think, you know, we quite often, when we think about studying in France, we think about speaking French, but it's worth remembering as well, there are lots of other international students. So I remember in my first time in Bordeaux, I ended up speaking quite a lot of German um, <laughs> as well, which I hadn't expected at all. Um, and it was a really nice surprise. Um, and I think, you know, by being in France, yes, I learned a lot about French culture, but I also learned a lot about other different cultures. Um, and that was something that was surprising for me. And I hadn't anticipated making kind of friends from America or friends, well, obviously I thought about friends from France, but friends from Germany. I learned a lot more about other cultures than I thought I would do. Mm. A testament to um, not only how popular France is as a destination for international students, but also how welcoming it is to, to international students for sure. Um, in our final few minutes here, the time has flown by, I'd like to just ask you each to offer your advice to students who are thinking about studying in France. I'm sure we have students watching this session who are in various stages of deciding whether or not they're going to pursue a degree, an undergraduate degree, a master's degree, a PhD in France. Um, what would be your words of advice to students who are, who are thinking about doing that? And, and Claire, we'll start with you. I would say go for it. Um, take the opportunity that comes your way, embrace it, see where it leads, um, enjoy the time, and um, hopefully, yeah, it will change your, your path. Thanks. Lucy? Um, yeah, I'd say definitely do it. Like, doing my Erasmus year um, in 2020 in Paris completely changed my life, and now I'm back here again for another two years, and my best friends all live here. Um, it's completely changed my life, um, and I'd say, yeah, be prepared, be proactive, uh, be organized, and don't be afraid to put yourself out there because everyone else is doing exactly the same thing. And French people aren't scary. So <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. And Shweta. Yeah, I have the same advice along the same lines. I, I think that it's definitely an experience that will change our lives or your lives, <laughs> because of course it will make you a better person, more accepting towards different cultures. And I feel trans was a perfect platform where I built the most cross-cultural bridges I could ever imagine. And I um, I used to love uh, having certain predefined conceptions about French people and that, uh, that were completely shot down when I went to France. And 
And uh, it's it's just so nice to be a better person, to understand a different culture uh, so so nicely after actually living there and meeting so many different people. Of course, it's it's the perfect platform to um, to nurture whatever career you want to take in. And I think it's it's just like the best place to study, in my opinion. Wonderful. Thank you all so much for joining us for this portion of um, the webinar. I think, as I've already said, it's incredibly helpful for prospective students to hear from current and former students about their experience. It brings the experience to life a little bit for them beyond what they might be able to read on university websites or um, you know, even student blogs. I think just hearing you speak about your experience and how valuable it was um, is incredibly useful to them in their process as they think about their next steps um, in their education. So thanks for your time. Thanks for sharing your expertise with us. We really appreciate it. For the students in our audience, thanks for joining us and we hope you enjoy the rest of today's session. Thanks everybody. Hi, hello everybody. Well, I'm Damien Vial, I'm the higher education attaché. I hope you enjoyed this webinar and that you had the chance to find all the information you will need to build your study project to go to France. Well, I wanted to conclude this webinar uh, by talking about the welcoming policy that has been implemented in France lately, um, and also to talk about the welcome desk that you will find in most of the cities, in most of the higher education uh, institution where you will be uh, a welcome. Um, what is a welcome desk, actually? A uh, welcome desk is a place where you will find all the services uh, that you will need when you arrive to France. Uh, it's about, I'm talking about housing, I'm talking about financial aids, transportation, um, uh, the, how to um, um, validate your residence permit, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's very interesting and a uh, place to go. Um, and as well, uh, the institution mostly um, organize for international students welcoming week uh, where they, they you will be able to have like French classes to meet your peers uh, to be part of a buddy, a buddy program uh, so uh, people can uh, offer like mentoring so it's really a useful um, policy that has been uh, implemented lately uh, where you will be able to find uh, this information? Well, actually, there is a website uh, that gathers all the information on a welcoming policy uh, city by city. So I advise you to have a look on this website and you will find very useful information for your arrival. The um, objective is to make your arrival as smooth as possible. Okay, now uh, I... Uh, wish you a pleasant day and I hope that you will uh, I will find you uh, soon in France uh, and you will enjoy your study stay uh, in France. Have a nice day.